what's that plant doing here? I'll tell you in a second. First, I would love to share with you tips on self-discipline to make you more productive. Many of my students were not huge fans of self-discipline, but my goal is to share as many tips as I can and for you to pick whatever fits you and your learning style. So do you think that having plans in the workspace is good or bad? It has been scientifically proven that having plans in the workspace is beneficial to your work progress, so that's great. I personally, though, recommend having plans at your workspace for another reason, and I'll tell you why. So if you have a big room in which you live and work, it is helpful to have a plant in between those two areas. It functions like a separator between the work area and the free time area. If you don't have a plan, you can use a curtain or a shelf, any visual signal that tells your brain where to focus and where to relax. If you don't have a plant or curtain to separate these two areas, another thing you can try is have your workspace in one color and your living space in another color. That also works because your brain sees the visual change between the two areas and it knows when it's time to focus and when it can enjoy the free time. So once you separated your workspace from your living space, it is time to get down to the organization of your work area. You might want to do that with regular tasks, such as setting a time frame in your calendar or calendar app in order to organize your desks regularly. My two tips in order to increase your work efficiency in your workspace is Desktop Zero and Inbox Zero. Desktop Zero means that whenever you stop working for the day, you want to clean up your desk. You want to have nothing on it. Have it as clear as possible. Desktop Zero means everything goes back to where it belongs and it will be a lot more likely for you to start working the next morning because you have less of a barrier to start organizing your desk. Inbox Zero means that whenever you receive an email, you take care of it at that moment. You decide if you need to delete it or answer it or archive it. So whenever you get stupid advertisement, you might want to delete that right away. If it's something you think you want to keep or at least be able to look for later, but you don't need it at the moment, you archive it. If you get an important email, you mark them important or answer them right away. By having an inbox zero, you will have a feeling of accomplishment because you completed all your email tasks and it will be a lot less likely to ever lose or forget about an important email again. Inbox Zero will make you feel a lot less overwhelmed with the amount of email that you get. One last tip, in order to get all those tasks done, you need motivators. Have a motivator for yourself that you know is your reward as soon as you get your task done. Set an ice cream date with your friend or to go watch a movie. Have fun completing your tasks because you know you can enjoy your free time after. So your declutter checklist should be something like this. Have one day a year where you declutter your whole workspace, your whole living space, and make sure you sort out everything you don't need anymore. Have one day a week where you declutter shelves or your desk, sort out whatever you think is not necessary or put it wherever it belongs. And the last declutter tip, don't empty your trash or recycle bin daily. It will make it a lot easier for you to decide if you want to delete something or not. If you know, you can still go back and retrieve it a week later or even a month later. Keep decluttering and organizing your workspace and you will feel a major improvement of how you work and how productive you are. Look at your room right now. Which improvements can you even do today? By creating an efficient workspace and relaxing free time space, it is possible for yourself to have a positive mindset to get productive work done.